survivors, we take a closer look at the emergency response to this shooting. Uh, SWAT officers killing the gunman who opened fire with an assault rifle inside the crowded nightclub. There's a picture. Law enforcement identifying this man here seen on your screen as 29-year-old Omar Mateen, a U.S. citizen living in Port St. Lucie, Florida. Let's bring in now Steve Rogers. He's a former member of the FBI's Joint Terrorism Task Force and a retired detective in the Nutley, New Jersey Police Department. Uh, Mr. Rogers, so good to have you here. An unfortunate, unfortunate story that we're covering. Um, I want to start with... Um, you know, this concern about what people are calling this. Um, and you, I understand that you feel that this is more about a label. Um, it, it's more than semantics, it's guidance on how to tackle the issue. Yes, it's all about leadership and it begins at the White House. The President of the United States refuses, has continuously refused to call this what it is, radical Islamic terrorism. He is setting the tone. Uh, he treats this as a criminal justice issue. It should be treated as a national security issue. You have two presidential candidates who come out and, and tell us, well, it's about guns, it's about this, it's about that. At least to Donald Trump's credit, he came out and he hit it right on the nose. It's radical Islamic terrorism. So when you call it that, how does that change how you tackle it? It changes the, the rules of engagement because now you're not dealing with a criminal element you're dealing with what amounts to a military operation that's being uh, conducted against this country the rule and I've spoken to people in the law enforcement community as well as the Intel community and they're concerned about that we have to change the rules of engagement to defeat this enemy and if you deem this a military operation then how does that change in terms of the information that's available to terrorism task force uh, members as well as local authorities and tools. T talk to us about that. How does right. it change? The, the first thing we need to do, intelligence and information is key to prevention. So we have to give the NSA sweeping powers to do what they must do to defeat this enemy. And that means, yes, we may have some people in the government surveilling on our phones and, 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 and on our computers. Look, the, the, I'm not worried about that, and I'm sure you're not worried about it, but there are people opposed to that. But my goodness, it's either going to be the blood of Americans on our street or we're going to save American lives. The other thing we must do Two other things. A strong military response should have been done a long time ago. We have the most powerful military in the world. We're not using it to defeat this enemy. And thirdly, equip our police officers in local governments with the equipment they need and the intelligence they need to defeat this enemy. Okay, a couple of follow-ups. Then tell me more about the equipment you're talking about that local, lo local officials, uh, police need. And also, if, this, if you're suggesting to involve the military more, in what way are you talking about here at home or... Uh, abroad. Not at all. First, the military abroad. We have the power. We have the air power. And unfortunately, you might have to use ground troops. You go in and you decapitate them. We know where their command and control center is. I mean, when I hear reports that we're not going to bomb certain areas because we're afraid that there's going to be collateral damage on something that's sacred to ISIS, that's ridiculous. That's one. So use your military power and use it decisively. Secondly, regarding local law enforcement, we're telling the citizens of this country, if you see something, say something. Well, if they say something to local police, there are a lot of police officers that don't know what to do with that information. So then how do you train the local police officers? Well, you have the FBI. You have a lot of intelligence agencies that could come to local police departments and train them, just like they do with domestic violence and other low-level crimes. Now, where are you going to get the training? Well, the United States Congress, who should bear some of the burden of this mess, has the ability to get that funding to local police departments. They fund everything else. How about funding training for local police departments? And the the reason why I say that is, to your third point, what is the most important thing local police departments need? They're trained in weapons. They're trained in tactics. It's intelligence. Intelligence and information is key to defeating this enemy. So really quickly, because I have to go, but if this were deemed a military operation, uh, if that, th that suggestion that you made, if that was already in place, what would have changed when they first came across this Omar Mateen person? Massive, unmerciful bombing of ISIS in the Mideast. We haven't done that. We're not going to do it under this president, but hopefully after January, it will get done. All right. Uh, well, it, it's just really an unfortunate story, and that's really an understatement. It's really bothersome. Uh, former member of the FBI Joint Terrorism Task Force, retired uh, Detective uh, Steve Rogers, thank you so much, sir. You're welcome. Okay. Eric?